start uh, shaping and contouring uh, the rudder and the dagger board. There's a fairly technical hydrodynamic efficiency factor. Uh, Doug Labor gave me a diagram of some optimal shapes uh, a while ago. Uh, I, don't, I couldn't find it, but <clears throat> basically the high point needs to be about one third of the way through the overall width of the blades. And then you've got a fine contour at the, at the rear, the trailing edge, and a little more blunt contour at the leading edge. So I'm going to mark out those high points, mark out the center line before we start, and I start contouring the piece of the dagger board that's in the water, and then the blade of the rudder. Close to shaped on the rudder. This didn't glue up well, so I have to set that up. And dagger board close. And uh, give a pass to the tiller extension from Doug. Oh, time to put some scary holes in the boat. This U-bolt uh, is a little smaller than ones I've used in the past. It's really fine be for uh, attaching to the trailer, the bow post that I got a rig in here. Attaching an anchor line, bow line, whatever. So the top of the piece of the skeg that comes through underneath is seven and a half inches below where these bolts come through, so we can't go any lower than that.
back from visiting Hyderabad, India, and Stockholm and Linköping, Sweden, uh, last night, and uh, really nice to be home. And I can't sleep, so it's 2:30. Uh, come out and uh, see if I can make myself sleepy again. Well, it was a great trip. Very difficult travels. Wonderful people. Our team in Hyderabad, fantastic folks, and then uh, the other people we met there that work with our software. And uh, similarly in Ling Chaping, our team there had a great time. Appreciate that, all you guys. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, next steps. I'm going to steal some flat spots on these fins, take them out, and uh, just in the middle of the night, got to be quiet. Take the rudder hardware back off, final sand these, rudder tiller, and dagger board, get them ready for finish. <laughs> I'm just working my way down toward that center line and get maybe a sixteenth of an inch up in here it's gonna <clears throat> better to leave a little bit of meat because it bangs on the edges of the dagger board trunk as it comes in and out but down here I'd like to bring almost to a sixteenth of an inch and then finally hand sand round over just feeling for this shape it's not quite there yet I think the fins are just about ready. Fins and tiller. I'm really looking forward to seeing the grain light up on that piece of hickory. And uh, just about ready for epoxy. But I think what I'm going to do is do the whole blade of this rudder, <clears throat> maybe just one wrapping strip around the head. Uh, these joints. With the gudgeons or pintles are pretty tight and the head cap as well. So, while I got the fiberglass out and have to do multiple coats, I might as well just put a little strengthening wrap around here, get this whole blade covered. Nice to have a little directional arrow, so we'll wood burn that in. I need something to hang this by while it's getting finished and I'm Based on Kim's and Brian's bow, which has a similar board, this thing's going to sit all the way down in, and it's kind of nice when you're going downwind and you don't need the full dagger board to be able to have it pulled up part way. So I'm going to drill a hole here, uh, which will eventually will make a little piece out of this dowel to have on the boat. So when you're going downwind and you want a partial board down, pull it up, shove the dowel through there, and then uh, use this in the meantime for uh, hanging it while it finishes. See how that works. Figuring out how to suspend all these pieces. We can do them at once. We yep, I think this will work. I'll have to put the fiberglass on the tip of the dagger board, then hang it up, and then finish. Same here with the rudder. <clears throat> we'll have to uh, finish and glass this wrapper here put it on this and then hang the glass over the fin and finish it there. That's the plan. Uh, okay, 
I'm not sure. I probably have to grind this down, maybe put another piece, single piece, because this is where it's going to hit the hit the bottom. If it hits the bottom, when it hits the bottom. We'll see how that comes out. These odd bubbles. Uh, saw that on the thwarts one time. But it's a start. Well, we got a nice snowstorm. Did a little cross country skiing and shoveled the drive. And uh, in the middle of the night, it's getting so cold, I had to bring these guys inside to finish curing. So I think what I'm going to do, since this is a bite-sized project, unlike the whole boat, is do some sanding out here, and they're going to need some more epoxy, at least where the glass is. And this looks ugly, doesn't it? But uh, I think it'll be fine. And I have a theory. I've seen these bubbles before. I think what happens is, on wood like Sapele, where there's fairly open grain, Unlike the hickory here, which has no, no problem. If you start off with the wood cold, put some finish on it, and then start heating it up to get it to cure, then air expanding inside the wood comes out and makes these bubbles. Uh, it's all right. I think though, I'm gonna have to put, after carving this off, put one more bit of glass along the bottom edge of the rudder, sand this, and uh, we'll We'll do the finish inside in the basement where it's warm. Zero degrees. Beautiful full moon. It's an eclipse last night. It's the red moon phenomenon. So here's a little work area in the basement. surfaces including another layer around six ounce around that piece that didn't fold so nicely and where it's going to get hit if and when it goes aground. Uh, a little discoloration from where those bubbles were in the first coat and even a couple of new bubbles so that's that's unfortunate that coloration is not going to go away because there's glass in there. If this were just epoxy, I could sand down to, until the bubbles, leftover bubble areas were filled. So that'll irritate me, but it's certainly not a functional problem. I can sand this down and urethane it and we're done with the fins. And maybe someday I'll get the ambition to strip it back down to the wood rid of that but uh, I think that's going to be good enough to bury the weed we're ready to sand and move on to urethane on that and the tiller and tiller extension uh, sanded and ready to go forward to urethane here as well I'll do a uh, sand on uh, this epoxy with the hope of getting it ready for urethane out here in the shop and then do it back inside it's like zero degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to try 80 instead of 60 on the orbital. I want to get it get it decent, but uh, it's easy to go all, all the way through too quickly. Well, it's not perfect by a stretch, but uh, I think we can take it inside, see if we can get some urethane on them. Well, I think this was eh, half the battle, maybe not half, but... A good piece of the battle figuring out an ad hoc shop down here how to get these guys suspended. Almost forgot this step. The amine blush. Well, the 
air pockets sure are disappointing otherwise this would be kind of a fun moment seeing all that grain light up but not bad we'll see how it sets beautiful spelling